in the last stream, we were working on this little compact machine over here. And the idea was that we were working towards trying to get these guys, these cubic boron nitride, because these are used in the alloy smelter in combination with hop graphite dust to get unrefined dash. And the idea with that is that you can smelt the unrefined dash into unrefined, into normal refined dash ingots, and then you can craft those dash ingots uh, into dash pickaxes that can then be used to get uh, these guys, give it a second, right here, the hopstitute carbon fiber, which can be used to uh, multiply our hop graphite ingot production by nine. So instead of getting one hop graphite ingot per hop graphite dust, with nine hop substitute, we can get nine hop graphite ingot from one hop graphite dust. The only downside to the whole situation is that it requires this monstrous wall of machines that we have right here. Uh, but thankfully, for the most part, things have been going quite smoothly. As you can see, uh, we do have 16 of these uh, cubic boron nitrides in here. Uh, and so if we throw in a few more hop graphite dust, we will get like our first batch of, uh, of dash. The only thing wrong with our system right now, well, there are a few things actually that are currently wrong uh, with our system. The first is that we are currently not automating the production and exportation of boron, I believe it is. Is it molten boron we need here? Let me check that real quick. I think it's boron. Boron in the old melter gets you molten boron, molten boron is I think what we need. Yeah, we're after this um, diode brain is what we're after to actually make the, uh, the whole thing work here. So for one, we're not automating the uh, production and uh, exporting the boron to the melter here, which is uh, one problem that we need to solve. And uh, two, the other kind of bigger problem is a lack of power, right? We have a lot of machines here that are using a lot of power. For example, uh, the electrolyzer is using just shy of a thousand RF per tick and is already really, really slow. You can see here that we don't have the redstone flux to kind of keep up with that. It's falling uh, very rapidly. And uh, the reason for that is, of course, that right now we're still just using uh, our basic fission reactor. Now, between streams, chat, you may notice I've done a little bit of work in this uh, room here. It's now much more clean and empty than it was for many of the previous streams. And the reason for that is I've tried to condense a lot of our uh, stuff into smaller compact machines. So for example, over here, we have, of course, our little farming machine that is producing um, mostly our wood. It, it is also producing cactus and wheat and uh, hemp as well, but mainly it's producing wood, which is being exported to this cache. That wood is then being pumped over into here. And this room has had like a bit of a, a facelift since the end of the last stream. So essentially all of this is pretty much how it was before. We have um, our system that produces sand um, and also produces clay, bone meal, sulfur. And then up here is our obsidian with the old thorium 230 block, the crucible and the cobblestone generator. So all of that is the same, um, albeit a little bit reorganized to where uh, it's kind of make it fit more efficiently into the space. And then over here, what I've done is I've moved all of the caches that used to be outside in our main room into this sub room. So we have like our iron grit, our gold, our copper, our nickel, um, etc. Up at the top here, we've got redstone and I think it's flint. We then have uranium right here, lead, tin dust and silver. Now, one thing that I've not done just yet, and we also of course have uh, this guy up here. I do have these machine wall blocks here just so I can kind of jump up like, like this. But uh, up here is uh, the little compact machine that is making all of our resources. This is the, the machine that makes pickaxes and then uses those pickaxes in the uh, auto clickers uh, to produce all the stuff that you can see uh, flowing out of these item pipes. Uh, back here is where we have our fission reactor now. Again, nothing's changed about the actual fission reactor itself. The only thing that's different now is that it's inside of this compact machine. And uh, up top here, we have another cache with oak planks. Uh, so those, that, that is where the oak planks from here are going. So they go through into here and then they arrive uh, just behind that cache. So they get kind of pumped straight into that cache. And then that cache feeds those oakwood planks into this machine here, which uses those planks to make sticks, to make pickaxes. And then, uh, you know, uses those pickaxes to, uh, to make resources. Now, I have just noticed that uh, I have not quite finished this setup here because right now our reactor is not currently getting uh, the resources it needs. And the reason for that chat is that uh, I need to do this, this, and then disconnect this like that. Uh, the idea being here, and we might also have to, uh, hmm, or maybe not, because of course we have to get our uranium grid into our fission reactor, right? And I'm thinking about the best way we could potentially do this. I'm thinking the best way might be like this. And then if we put our retriever here for uranium grit, so whitelist, uranium grit, and then ignored, that should hopefully go ahead and pull that in. Now, I'm not quite sure I'm gonna get that item ducked back, although I very much so would like to. 
oh, it's fine, chat. We can leave it there. Uh, but yes, we should now be pumping uranium, hopefully back uh, into the uh, isotope separator. Yeah, we can see that's going up now. Fantastic. So our fission reactor in here should continue to work for uh, the foreseeable future, as long as we have enough uranium. Um, and the way that I've kind of oriented all of these is basically we have these four and these four are all ingots. It's hard to see because the pipes are on the front of them, but we have uh, nickel, copper, gold, iron, silver, tin, and lead. Those are all of the ingots that need to be smelted, right? And that is something that I want to do today. I'm hoping to get maybe uh, seven redstone furnaces down that all pump out into other caches that store the like fully, you know, smelted, pro uh, fully smelted uh, ingots, right? And then at the top, we have the redstone and the flint. Those, of course, do not need to be smelted. And then the uranium grit as well, which also uh, does not need to be smelted. So hopefully what we can do is we can put redstone furnaces kind of on this wall here and on this wall here, have those pump out into other caches that are going to go here and here. And then ideally, given that we have this uh, refined storage cable coming in from uh, this tunnel here, we can then put uh, external storage on all of those caches and access all of the you know final products, all of the ingots from the overworld. That's the idea. But um, yeah, that's basically all of the reworking that I've done. I think everything else is pretty much the same. Our sewage room is still exactly the same as it was before. It's mostly just that I've moved kind of everything that was here into this compact machine here. And I'm thinking I might also move a lot of this stuff here. Like all of this doesn't need to be here. It can probably be pushed uh, into the tree room. And what we will probably do maybe in the next stream is uh, a look at replacing this tree farm with a robot like we have for our uh, miniaturization field projectors because this system is you know functional but a little janky right now you'll see we are uh, out of ball on spaxel hose in these two auto clickers which is why the system has uh, stopped working um, on top of the fact that you know every so often it, this bottom block will break before the rest of them and the whole system will stall there are better ways to do this, I think, with robots, and so we will look at doing that uh, in the future, especially given that if we're going to automate the improved blast furnace, we need basically infinite charcoal uh, to make infinite amounts of steel, right? However, before we do that chat, let's look at getting ourselves seven redstone furnaces. We already have one, and so ideally we just need six more. So uh, let's see, do we have enough glass? I think a stack should be enough. So uh, let's go ahead and grab, I think, just like five more of those. Yeah, that's seven, beautiful. Uh, then let's go ahead and basically craft all of our bricks uh, into all of our brick into bricks like so and then uh, do we have what it takes so we need 14 of those which is uh, going to be a little dicey but we are going to have enough here and then from there seven more of these and i think chat that we are pretty much good to go so one two three four five six and seven beautiful uh, we should also go and make seven hardened upgrade kits if we can, which I think we definitely can if we get uh, maybe a little bit more bronze. And I did also make more uh, hardened glass between episodes as well, and so I think, Chad, that we should even be able to upgrade these uh, right away up to the, uh, the reinforced here as well. Oof, almost, almost, but uh, getting more electrum is uh, not going to be too difficult whatsoever i did also move our induction furnace uh, up to here as well our induction smelter even uh, up to here so we can uh, smelt things like so nice and easily and i might even chat look at uh, at getting multiple more detectors because these are not too difficult and actually i don't know we could this is 10 eyes i got silver you fool there we go um we could use detectors for resources that don't require Actually, no, I don't think it matters. So it, a few streams back, we set the detector up to stop the, like, redstone furnace. We have uh, one redstone furnace, I think, already lying around, right? Yeah, this guy here. We set up this redstone furnace with this detector to smelt our iron, but not smelt all of it, right? Because we do still need to be able to make uh, the old modularium dust in a pinch. And so we do need to keep some pulverized iron or iron grit lying around, which means we don't want to turn all of our iron grit into, uh, into iron ingots. But I think iron is really the only resource for which that's uh, an issue right i think basically every other smeltable grit we can just smelt freely and, and we don't have to worry about keeping a, a backlog of the grit form right because uranium is not going to get smelted anyway and uh, all the rest of them i don't think we need in smelted form so i'm fairly certain chat that what we can do here is we can put down our redstone furnaces like so then uh, we do want to make sure that all of these are set to input from the left and uh, to auto input 
as well. So that's going to suck um, all of the uh, you know grit from the adjacent cache into that redstone furnace. Like that. And then from there, hopefully that gets sucked in. You can, uh, you can, oh no, these, uh, that one's set to high. I see, okay, yeah, these are all working, that's fine. Uh, so that is nickel, that's fine. Now, the only one we do want to set to high is this one, because like before, I do want to put down the detector right about here, make sure that the, um, the redstone furnace for iron, oh, maybe we can't do this, chat. Hmm, because we do have to power these, of course, and power does have to come in from the front, right? I think this might be a non-issue, actually, and of course, all of our items in here are being collected uh, by the old vacuumulator there, but um, I think that this might be a non-issue. If we put, like, smaller caches here, so long as the cache that we export the iron ingots into is smaller than the cache for reinforced iron, we're never going to use all of the iron grit, right? If we put down a smaller cache here that can only hold, uh, let's say, 80,000 iron, and this can hold 160,000, we're always going to have more iron grit than iron ingots. And so this might not be an, an issue, chat. I think maybe we can just make seven more uh, caches here, hook all these up with power, and we might be good to go. Now, it is going to get a little janky in terms of uh, the actual layout of uh, power cables here, because, of course, we do have to uh, power all of these from the front, like this. And we do also have to bear in mind that uh, we're going to have caches here and here, and those caches need their fronts available as well for external storage. And so I think what we're probably going to do is something a little bit like this. And again, please forgive the jank. But I think if we do that, we can then go and grab seven caches. And actually, chat, I do it constantly. I need to remember that, uh, well, I need to do two things. First things first, I need to go and grab my wireless crafting grid, which is here in my inventory, never mind. <laughs> and then I need to stop going back to the overworld because we can actually grab everything we want from here. We don't have to keep heading backwards and forwards like I've been doing over and over and over again. Instead, all we can do, all we have to do, is just uh, shift click these things, in, uh, these things in, and we should be good to go. I constantly forget every time. Now, of course, these do not stack, which is uh, somewhat awkward. Uh, those two machines there were uh, empty, so we can go ahead and throw those into the system for now. But yeah, essentially, we're just going to do something like this. Make sure that all of these are set to uh, output on the right and uh, auto output like that. And that should be uh, pretty much everything there, chat. This should be a fully automated system for... And this is, this is probably something we should have done many, many streams ago now. Like, we've been needlessly you know, manually smelting all of our all of our stuff in uh, in the old nuclear furnace when we really didn't need to be doing it all this time. All right, so let's get some more chests. I'll make, you know, just a tome. We've got like 300,000 wood at this point. And then let's make some more caches. Uh, I think we need like maybe just one more. There we go. And, oh, no, we, we didn't really need three. That's fine. And there we go. So... Obviously now, in an ideal world, we would put uh, external storages on the front of all of these. And we do have two external storages uh, lying around. Originally, these were on, um, I think, the uh, the wood up here, and they were also on uh, the redstone. So I think we would, again, in an ideal world, have external storages here and here as well, as on all of the, uh, you know, th as well as on the front of all of the machines. Because we do want to be able to access our wood and our redstone from the system. However, if we want to be make all of these uh, accessible. Why are you not smelting? Oh, it's got to set the redstone to high, of course. Um, let's change that back. But uh, if we want to make all of these accessible, we're going to need, what, seven more external storages? Which I think is doable. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we do have nine diamond nuggets in here. And we might even have uh, some of the old, are they called processors? Construction cores. We don't. Mm, I thought we might have one or two construction cores left. Alas. The question, chat, really is, do I want to use seven of our diamond nuggets to make more external storages? I think I do. Nice. All right. Boom. And boom. So, with all of those in hand, we can finally head on back through to our normal compact machine, and we can put 
external storages on all of those. And uh, the final piece of the puzzle, of course, is connecting those all up uh, to our pre-existing uh, kind of nest of, of cables, which again is going to be a little bit janky. And I'm going to move my the place I come in just in case so that I don't spawn inside a block. Um, and again, I think ideally we do want to go up to uh, to connect up the uh, the redstone and the wood as well. So let me quickly grab a few more cable here. And then see if I can't like connect this up in a way that's not incredibly janky. Although I think that I'm probably going to do something like this and then kind of run this just like that, right? Uh, down and across to here. And that should work, chat. Again, this is probably a room that we're not going to spend too much time in after uh, today's stream because everything in here is pretty much automated. And uh, we've already got an external storage on the obsidian there. We've already got an external storage on the sand there. Now we have external storages on all of our ingots as well as on our redstone and our planks. And so now all of those should be accessible from within the system. We go ahead, we type in ingot. You can see we've got all of these, you know, increasing in size um, as time goes on. And so hopefully this is just a nice step forward in the realm of automation, right? Hopefully now we just don't have to worry about going, grabbing grit, smelting it in the uranium furnace uh, or the nuclear furnace and then using it to craft, right? Hopefully that's all done for us going forward. We are going to run into a slight issue. And that slight issue is going to be that eventually these caches are going to fill up. The caches for like iron grit and redstone grit or redstone dust uh, are going to fill up. And so I think another thing that we probably do want to do is maybe utilize some dense item ducts and potentially also utilize a nullifier. So what I'm thinking is chat. I'm fairly certain the way that the thermal dynamic item looks work is they will always try to send items to the nearest location they can, right? So well, all of these should be making their way to the nearest cache, right? So the iron comes out of there and then it can't go anywhere else. So it'll try and go to here because that's the closest it possibly can get to. I think if we put down like a dense item duct here and then like a nullifier, what the dense item duct does is it makes the other pipes think that the items after that are much further away. So for example, um, if this here was a dense pipe and then we had, uh, you know, a nullifier right here, this pipe would be pumping items into the nullifier, but this pipe, because it would be a dense pipe, would be making all of the other pipes think that this nullifier was really, really far away. And thus the nullifier would be the last place that things would try to go. So everything would always try to go into its own cache before it tries to go uh, to the nullifier. But if we do ever fill up a cache, and this cache, for example, for Iron Grit does fill up, at that point, if Iron Grit comes out, it should go to the nullifier, despite the fact that it's like really far away. For now, though, let me see if I can't make a, a dense item duct. I think I can. Like so. So where this one increases path length dramatically. And then from there, I think we already have a nullifier in the system because I accidentally made one earlier when uh, trying to make a uh, vacuumulator. But then uh, over here, we're going to have the old dense item duct like that, and then the nullifier right about there. And so I think this should work as intended. Um, the servo at the top, I think, is currently set to nearest first. Yeah, and so it's always going to try and send an item to the nearest location first, which means the nullifier is always going to be the last destination um, for the nullifier or for you know any uh, any grit or anything like that so i'm pretty sure chat that this room is basically done it's a complete mess of wires and machines and blocks and caches and everything but i think it gets the job done i think it has all of our resource generation and all of our resource storage as well as you know some more resource generation and resource storage over here and uh, we do have a bit more space up at the top here if we wanted to add uh, more resource generation in the future but now though that's good and so we can pivot over uh, to working on the old uh, improved blast furnace, which of course requires us, um, I believe, to get 27 blast brick, which is made by crafting up regular blast brick with steel plates. And as luck would have it, chat, um, we do already have 27 blast brick available right up here. Graphite block and iron blocks in the alloy furnace are the best output for steel IMO. Does this make like steel blocks? Ooh. So you can put a block of iron and a block of graphite into the alloy furnace to get a block of steel. The graphite is, uh, of course, the uh, the smelted version of uh, this graphite dust that we've been making previously. That's interesting. You can smelt, you can increase the speed, uh, of course, of the uh, of the alloy furnace as well if you want. 
The block of cold coke is also interesting because we do have a lot of cold coke lying around. 1,269. Not a crazy amount, but you know, not a terrible amount either. Between streams, I did add a, uh, a cache in here, by the way. Uh, so we are storing. The, well, we have a place to store the charcoal. Previously, the redstone furnace was just outputting all of its charcoal into the uh, the back of the machine, uh, whereas now it's outputting to the cache and then going out uh, into... Oh gosh, I've messed it up, chat. <laughs> I've messed it up. I picked the tunnel up off the wall. Uh, let me put that back down real quick. I think that's right. Is down right? Let me check. No, down is not right. There we go, west. Uh, you forgot to upgrade the furnaces. Oh, did I? I totally did. Hold on a second, chat. Here we go. Let me uh, throw these on here. Nice. We could also, if we wanted to, uh, put, you know, speed augments on here, but I think for now this is fine. I don't think we really need these to be, uh, you know, extremely fast. You know, they're already, you know, they've already produced a few hundred ingots, and we're not going to be using them that fast that these need to be, like, you know, at the speed of light, I don't think. Uh, for the fusion reactor, you will need a thousand plus tough alloy ingots. It might be useful to automate ferroboron alloy and tough alloy while you're automating this stuff. Yeah, that's the thing, because... Before I make the fusion reactor as well, I do want to make a, a better, we, well, we have to make, I think, a better fusion reactor because we need to get, um, like like I said, about 13,000 redstone flux. And uh, even to make a fusion reactor, all of the, you know, cooling that we need requires a ton of uh, steel and tough alloy. Um, all of the casing that we need, uh, which, let me type in fission, requires, you know, get more bl basic plating, which is more uh, lead and more graphite dust and then more tough alloy. And, you know, so we are going to need a lot of that stuff and uh but to, to get all of that automated i think we do have to start with the automating of steel right if we automate steel we can then automate the making of steel pickaxes if we can automate the making of steel pickaxes we can then automate the creation of boron and lithium we can then use the boron and the automated steel to make ferroboron and you know so on and so forth i think what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the graphite that comes out of this manufacturer here and we're going to craft that uh, we're going to smelt it and then we're going to craft the uh, the smelted ingots into graphite blocks we're then going to throw those graphite blocks with iron into an alloy furnace, and that is going to get us blocks of steel, which I guess we could then craft back, but I, we can also leave it in steel form. We're then going to store those. So I think that is my, my method that I'm going to use to go forward. So what I'm going to do, chat, is I'm going to nab this alloy. Actually, I'm going to make a new alloy smelter because I know we're going to need more than one anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and grab another one of those. And then essentially, down here, we're going to swap this from nearest first to round robin, like so. And then from there... We're going to have half go into this pressurizer to continue the creation of cold cook. And then we're going to have half uh, actually get smelted first, which is where this uh, spare redstone furnace comes in. Like that. And then from there, we'll have it go into the alloy furnace like that. So uh, let's go ahead and set you to enabled or ignored. So now it should put like one in here, one in here. This is going to input on the left and the output on the right. And then this is going to input uh, you on the left, and then nothing else. And I guess we'll input iron from the top. We could also input it from the bottom, though, which might not be terrible. The room is getting a little, uh, a little janky. Just think about how I want to do this. It, uh, I think it's fine where it is for now. Yeah, I think we'll just run the cabling uh, to the top here, and then we'll just export iron, right? Uh, or export is it blocks of iron? Oh, do I need to craft the blocks of both of these actually? I think I do, right? Yeah, okay. So in that case, then, let's uh, move you temporarily. Um, I think what I might do here, chat, is uh, grab one of our compact machines, maybe just the 5x5. We don't really need anything too snazzy here. And uh, I think we'll just put that, for now at least, hmm. Yeah, for now at least, I think what we'll do is we'll grab some more of our flux ducts. Let's stick it here. Like that. Uh, we do to make sure we have a tunnel, which we do. Good stuff. And then yeah, inside of here we'll do some uh, we'll do some some crafting to get steel going. Uh, so real quick actually, steel is coming in on the south side.
like so. And then let's do, so we're smelting, oh, sorry, the graphite is coming in. And uh, we're smelting that graphite in on that side. I think that should work out just fine. Then we're going to output it to this side. Now, uh, we are going to have to use, I think, a sequential fabricator if we want to craft that up into, uh, into 9x9s. Again, though, Isaac, you don't have to leave to do that. You can do that in here. Like so. And uh, this time around, we thankfully don't have to worry about the uh, inputs here because we're only using one item. Like that. Give that a quick tick. And then from there, we can have the alloy furnace like so. So you are going to output on the right like that. And then you are going to input the graphite blocks on the left. And we'll say we'll input the iron blocks on the top like that, I think. Uh, we do need at least two more tunnels, one for power and one for cabling. But I think this is doable, chat. I think this is doable. And I understand the point, uh, the point by the way, in the Twitch chat about uh, not needing to automate steel just yet. Like we could uh, make the steel manually, make the bigger reactor, uh, and then work from there. But um, I think I think it's probably worthwhile making automating the steel right now, at least. Um, so tunnels, we can make some. I think. Uh, do we need? Yeah, I think we need combat machine wall. Hoppers and redstone, right? Like that. Beautiful. All right, so now it comes the tricky bit, though, chat, and it's getting all of this stuff in there. So power can basically go on, on, the, on any side. And then as for cabling, it's going to be janky, but I think we'll have it coming on the front. So power can be... Power can come in from the up, and then uh, east can be cabling. So let's do power down here. Let's add to up like that, and then just run these along like so. And then uh, we actually only need the cabling here, so we'll put that there. Have that set to east like so. And then throw down the old exporter like that and like that. And then we're actually already, like our, our system already knows how to make iron blocks thanks to uh, the crafting of machine wall. Or the auto crafting a machine wall. So uh, we should, chat, be able to go ahead and uh, take a block of iron, stick that in here. And if we put a crafting card in this, it will. Uh... Oh, maybe we don't even need a crafting card. We might need a crafting card. Do we need a crafting card? It seems to be crafting them, which is interesting. But this is working. So now what we need to actually like finalize that is I mean, this does work now. So now this is making steel. I was going to say to finalize it, we could um, oh, we could put some uh, like upgrades in here, some speed upgrades, uh, which would work, albeit you know quite slowly, um, and also it would not be too difficult whatsoever for us to make the uh, upgrade kits for the redstone furnace. We might not have the hardened glass. Oh, we do. Nice, 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 nice. Beautiful. I think the next thing I want to do, chat, is probably craft that steel back into ingots. And then from there, I think I want to get another auto clicker. And even if we don't use the steel for anything else, I think using this to automate the production of boron and uh, lithium is going to be worth it, right? That's kind of what we need the steel automated for. So what I'm thinking is if we get another sequential fabricator, And we throw that down kind of right next to the uh, the pre-existing sequential fabricator. So we can craft these uh, the steel. And we're going to need two of these, actually. So I should go ahead and make two of these right now. And I guess at that point, chat, I'm kind of, mm, how do I want to do this? I'm thinking in an ideal world, what we do is we take everything out of this little compact machine here and put it into maybe like this compact machine and then add steel to the mix. So everything's done on the same side. I moved my stick crafter outside and imported it into the machines. Yeah, that could be doable. Because right now, our wood is going into here and then into another compact machine to then, you know, make sticks and, and, and head back, which is a little janky. Um, but I think from like an, an easiness standpoint, I didn't really want to bother moving everything. Yeah, that's the thing. 
I think from an easier standpoint, though, it just makes sense to pump wood into here and just make another sequential fabricator, right? So if I just make two more of these, we can just make sticks again. So let's do you here with power, of course. And then we'll set you to input from the left. And uh, ideally, we'd have auto input on, uh, but apparently auto input is unavailable. So we might have to have this actually like here with um, an item duct between the two, like so, uh, to basically craft all of our steel blocks back into uh, actual steel. Uh, yep, that's working just fine. So the craft is just going to be something like that. That's working perfectly. Uh, we could always speed this up if we need, if needs be, but uh, I don't really think need does be. Um, and then I think from there, what we'll do is we will simply move this power wire. And by move that power wire, I mean, first of all, get some more flux ducts if we have them, which uh, we don't. We can make some more hardened flux ducts, I think, fairly easily. And then we'll just kind of run this somewhat jankily, which is actually the name of this um, channel, by the way. Uh, around there, and then we can just have another pipe right here, like that. And then inside, we'll throw down another tunnel. We'll have that extract, and we'll just have another sequential fabricator that turns planks into sticks in there. I think that's going to be just fine. Uh, do we have a spare tunnel? We do indeed. So this is coming in on the north side. So in here, we're going to need, I think, two more sequential fabricators. We've got the one. Let me see if I can't uh, make another one real quick. Because we'd want to make the sticks, and then we need another one to uh, make the pickaxes. So, I'm thinking we can do, let's do this, and have a tunnel here. This tunnel is going to go north, and then we're going to have the sequential fabricator right about there. This guy is going to input from the back like so, and he is going to turn oak planks into sticks, so I think we can just shift-click in the recipe, right? We can indeed. Click. Uh, we also need power up there, but we can do that in a second. Gosh, it's, it's so janky, chat. <laughs> it's, it's going to be real, real janky. Why is that not uh, going in? Did I not set this to... Oh, no, I'm an idiot, chat. Jeez. Blue is input, you fool. There we go. Boom. Give that a tick. There we go. So that's making sticks. Those sticks are then going to go down into here. Uh, this machine is going to require, before I do any of those, uh, that one is going to require the upgrade. That being this guy here to make sure that it doesn't fill up on any one item. Most likely uh, sticks in this scenario. We want to make sure it does have room for that steel as and when it's needed. So we'll uh, go ahead and grab another set of upgrade kits. One will do for now. <laughs> Boom. And oh, I'm an idiot chat's the wrong one. <laughs> Gosh dang it. It's okay. Boom, and boom. And then we can go ahead and set the top to input. We can set the bottom to input because you are going to output to the top there. Uh, and so then steel and sticks should both end up in here. Uh, we do want to make sure that it knows that it's making steel pickaxes. That's the current recipe that we're trying to trying to work with. Um, we could, if we wanted to, of course, try and do this with uh, treated sticks, but uh, probably not going to be worth it. So we'll go ahead and tick that. Um, is the top there set up correctly? Auto output, uh, input. Oh, you don't have power, of course. That is why you are not working. That is not a problem. We can make more flux ducts. There we go. So that's going to make sticks. Put them into here. Uh, and then all we have to do from there, chat, is uh, just take those uh, pickaxes out of there and, um, and hit them against the wall. And we should be good to go. So let's see if we can't make another auto clicker. We can indeed, good stuff. I guess we could have this uh, just like here. It's a little janky, but I think it works. And then something like that. Make sure that, uh, is it the back there? 
Oh, it's the uh, the right side is uh, the output, like so. And hopefully we should see steel pickaxes on their way out. Fantastic. All right. Give this guy some power, like so. And uh, hopefully, chat, we should see this guy, if we send him to left click and like speed seven, creating the stuff we need. So from there, all we need to do is grab ourselves one of the old um, vacuumulators. And we should be good to go. So I think I'll put that. Hmm, where do I want to put this? We're going to get quite a few resources here. What are we getting? We're getting boron. We're getting magnesium. We're getting nether quartz. We're getting lapis. And we're getting lithium and thorium. Quite a few resources. I guess we probably want uh, this. I don't think it really matters where we put the vacuum later. So we could put it like right here for now and just let that suck up everything that it's going to suck up. But uh, I think we probably want more caches, right? So that we can uh, actually store all these. Again, in an ideal world, we'd have all those caches hooked up to the system with um, external storages. And eventually we will get there when we get more diamond nuggets, uh, which we're getting closer and closer to. But uh, I like this. Let's go and get some uh, some caches and let's you know finalize this uh, this setup, shall we? Like that, I think. And then we'll just craft up some more item ducks, chat, and I think we're good to go. I think this is definitely something that we uh, need to get done. Just having all of this stuff automated just means that in the future, if we need lapis or if we need, you know, again, more more boron or lithium, it's, it's needed in large quantities for a lot of the nuclear craft stuff that we're going to be doing further as we go forward. So uh, having this good to go, I think, is definitely uh, definitely worth it. Uh, make sure the back of that is set to output, the top is not set to anything, and uh, and those should hopefully start to, uh, to distribute. So we can get rid of you and you. I should change my spawn chat. You are correct. I'll put it right here for now. Uh, and then we'll lock you. Lock you. Uh, Flint. I don't think... It, is Flint being made? I didn't think Flint was being made, but I, I could be wrong on that, actually. Oh, Flint is being made. Okay, never mind. Have I miscalculated chat? Is there only seven? Oh, yes. Yeah, is steel one? Did I, did I throw steel in there as one of the ones I wanted? I think I might have done right. Use. This guy makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay. Does take a little while for that guy to be uh, fed another pickaxe, but so that's fine. It's not a problem at all. Uh, it's a bit of a problem, actually. <laughs> um, I guess. To make it easier, you probably want like uh, I guess we could just put like a hopper or something on him. What's the fastest way to get an auto uh, to get uh, an item into an auto like a chat? Right now, I'm thinking of just putting a hopper. You don't need a cache for silicon. Do I not? What's coming? <laughs> did I make the silicon? I guess I did. Um, have I miscalculated chat? There were seven things coming in here, right? Obviously, silicon's not one of them. You can blacklist dirt and gravel on the vacuumulator. So I could, but then they just, uh, I guess they would just kind of sit on the floor and despawn, right? You know what? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Let's uh, blacklist dirt and gravel. There we go. It, it's going to cause a bit of lag, but not too much. Um, eight, you didn't put the flint in the cache. So it's nether quartz, lapis, lithium, boron, thorium, Flint. Is it eight? Nether quartz, flint, magnesium, thorium, lithium, boron, nether, nether, nether quartz, twice size of Q4. Uh, so basically, I'm thinking that I want to intercept some of the steel, if we can, although the steel is not coming in that fast. In fact, we stopped on the old, uh, the old graphite front. Why has our, I guess we've just slowed right down. Yeah, we've kind of worked through the backlog of, uh, of graphite at this point, where it's now going quite slowly. But that is working. I think for now that's fine, then, I guess. I will do the same that I did at the start, though, um, as 
is being recommended in chat as well, um, in that I will make a dense item duct and I will send my uh, excess items to a, uh, a nullifier, just in case anything else ends up inside of this uh, vacuum motor here. Oh, the lava's in here now, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little, little janky chat, but don't worry about it. So once again, just something like... Um, I guess just something like... This and this. Should get the trick done. So now anything that comes into the vacuum accumulator that doesn't have uh, space in a drawer... Uh, so, for example, if any of these drawers fill up, they'll, the excess will go into the vacuumulator, or the nullifier, sorry. Um, or if anything else ends up in here, for example, uh, then it will also end up in the, uh, in the nullifier. Does mean that I should be careful to not throw things on the floor there. And you know what, just to make that more likely, that I'm not going to throw stuff in front of the, the vacuumulator, I think we can do something like that. That way I'm, you know, not... Like, right now it's possible that I accidentally, like, break something and it gets sucked up. You know, if I break, like, this pipe here or something, it gets sucked up by the vacuumulator and then destroyed in the nullifier. Ideally, that's not going to happen. So if we do that, that kind of minimizes that chance as well. We are going to end up with um, stuff on the floor. I mean, I guess at this point, we could just unback, un blacklist, right? There's no need for the blacklist. At this point, the dirt and gravel is just going to get sent straight to the nullifier because it has nowhere else to go. But um, I think this is fine, chat. I don't know if we're going to be making the steel pickaxes fast enough. Like, obviously, right now, we've got quite the backlog of steel ingots here. But I think eventually, um, we might get to the point where this is not working fast enough. And most of that, like, obviously right now, it's it's kind of this these machines that are slow, but I think in the long run, it's likely to be this system here that is slow. And uh, one of the big reasons for that, chat, is the fact that this um, watering can system, whilst good for us originally, continually breaks. And uh, I think, kind of as I mentioned earlier, it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at, uh, at pivoting over to what was recommended um, in the pack at the beginning, that being the uh, Phytogram. This stuff here. Now that we know we can make it, Sawdust we have coming in automatically, Nitro we can make automatically, and Slank uh, we can get infinitely with Cobblestone and Sand in uh, an Induction Furnace. It might not be a terrible idea to swap this out just so that we have a more consistent, you know, source of charcoal.